Next up, the TCU Horn Frogs. Seven and six in 2018, four and five in the conference. Not good. Returning starters, they got seven on offense, five on defense. Number 85 nationally in experience returning, number seven in the conference. Head coach Gary Patterson, 167 and 63 in 18 years at TCU. Think about this. Think about all the stuff that has happened since Dennis Franchoni left for Alabama. Okay. And Patterson has been here that long. That long. That is insane. That's right. Right. So uh, he suffered through injuries, bad quarterback play, et cetera. But uh, his four previous seven and six or worse campaigns were followed with 10 plus wins. Number 107 scoring offense. They need a quarterback to emerge. Four starters on the offensive line. Uh, return two senior running backs, wide receiver uh, Jalen Rager, and more. Uh, they are all back. Number 24 total defense. Of course, Patterson's going to have a good defense, right? Correct. The number 40 scoring defense. They're going to remain pretty good with uh, senior quarterback Jeff Gladney and linebacker Garrett Wallow. Uh, it's all about the quarterback here. That's right. If Alex Delton or Justin Rogers can be effective, this team can easily hit 10 wins. Uh, I have got them very close to that. Me too. I've got them at 9 and 3. All right, so we're seeing things way too much alike. Where I've got them 9 and 3 as well. I love Gary Patterson. Last year, they led the world in turnovers. And it's just yeah. It's it's the exact opposite of what you think of or know of a Gary Patterson coach team. Well disciplined, does everything right, does all the small things right. I I have no idea. I couldn't explain it. Every week I kept thinking well, the turnovers eventually have to stop. Yeah. Like, like it's going to regress back to the mean. They've turned the ball over 30 they, times. They, they in were the insanely the unlucky with that. At the end of the year, they won't, nope, and they never stopped. It yeah. just never quit. I don't know how, I don't know how we're going to fix that, but I think they've got to fix that. I got yeah. them 9 and 3. Well, I think better quarterback play will will alleviate the issue. Well, right? most of those turnovers weren't on interceptions; they were all fumbles. Oh yeah, and it yeah. was from receivers, it was from running back, it was from quarterback, it was from everybody. But I think it was. I think a lot of it became uh, the instability issue, right? Maybe that was it. There could so have been that. It, it was just it, last year was a bad year. Maybe a, lead, a bad year. maybe a leader on the field in offense could step up and say, "Just hold hold the team accountable." Yeah. Without the coaches having to do it all. Exactly. I can see that. So now yeah, I will admit it is strange for us to pick a team to win nine games without really knowing who is going to emerge at quarterback. But, so much of that for me is just all in Gary Patterson. But they, they won seven games last year with with a team that I thought was without a quarterback. Complete chaos. Yeah. Offensively especially. Yeah. And the reason the defense struggled is because they would take two snaps, give the ball to the other team, and they're back on the field. Yeah. It, it happened frequently. The, when, uh, when that defense was able to get rest and the offense didn't score a lot but had longer, sustainable drives against Ohio State, they dominated a really good offense. Yeah. And then the turnover started happening. The defense stayed on the field at the end of the game over and over and over again, and I, Ohio State just said, ball game. Yeah. You, you can't make those mistakes against that level of competition. No, you're, you're entirely right about that. Uh, the only losses that I have on the schedule are at Iowa State, at Oklahoma State, and at Oklahoma. Now, I've got them beating Texas. I've got them beating uh, uh, Purdue at West Lafayette. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, I've got to win over Baylor. i got to win at Texas Tech. i got to win over West Virginia. They've got a, a nice home schedule. They do. They really do. But, I mean, that's some, that's some tough games. It, you will know early. In week three, when they go to Purdue, you will know whether this team is for real or not because that game will throw our entire prediction off. Oh, totally. Totally. Well, and then the other thing, we'll also know, you know, that game against Oklahoma is the second last game of the year. Yeah. If Oklahoma doesn't look like the standard Oklahoma, if Jalen Hurt isn't Baker Mayfield or Kyle Kyler Murray, Murray. Yeah. Then, then there's a really good chance – they they do get that extra win. They do get to the double digits, and and they're competing for the the Big Ten. Uh, well, I guess Big Twelve championship. Now I will say this: Vegas does not agree with us. I know that. Uh, seven and a half is the over under. Over is plus one twenty. The under is minus one forty. So if you think like us that they are more of a nine win team than a seven win team, 
Well, then you got a game and a half to play with here. I'm I'm going to bet if you were looking strictly at analytics, a lot of those turnovers are going to show up on analytics. You can't just erase them. Yeah. And if it, it I will tell you, if they turn the ball over anywhere close, let's say it shrinks by a third, but it's still as bad as it was. It doesn't. They, they will not finish nine and three. They they will be closer to seven and five. Yeah, I think uh, I think I agree with that. So. 